Let's start with, I'm going to jump around on this because I want to make sure that um, we get really mission critical stuff done. Um, and I don't see Sue Corey here. So um, Jeff, are you in a position to give us an update on the director search? Um, so let me just, well, I think they said there were, um, seven, six applications at this time. Um, going to start reviewing them. Uh, I think, so the advertisement, sorry, was, was placed on Indeed in, in the Greenfield Recorder and the Gazette and websites. Um, we've gotten six applications so far. Uh, or I should say Deerfield has six applications so far. I don't think they've been distributed um, to, to the interview committee yet. So um, I think we were hoping to get a, a couple more applicants and then uh, start reviewing the applications and scheduling interviews. Okay, and remind us who's on that search committee so that the public knows. Sure, so the, uh, it's the three town administrators from Deerfield, Waitley and Sunderland. Uh, as well as a representative of each of the town's council on aging. Great. Okay. Okay. And you don't know what the schedule is, or maybe Trevor, you know, I don't know um, about when those resumes will be distributed to the committee for their review. Uh, so I, I don't know. I know that she, when I talked to her just before Casey went on vacation, she said that she's gotten, let's say four or five in, I think, and that she was, she said either, you know, she was going to send those on to the, to the guys um, or when she got back from vacation, that's when it was going to get rolling for an interview. I think, like, as Jeff said, they were waiting for a couple more, see if a couple more would come in. So she's on vacation through the end of this week? She is. Okay. So yeah. hopefully we'll get those distributed and, and starting to, to review on the 20th? Yes. Yeah. I yeah. Certainly by the 20th. Yep. Okay. Well, I'm assuming the 20th only because if she's on vacation yep. through the end of this week and the 20th is a week from today, so. Yep, yep, exactly. Okay. Um, Jeff, do you want to add any any color to that or just leave it at that? Okay. Tom or Trevor, do you guys have questions about the search? <laughs> well, do, no. who, who, where'd we advertise, Jonathan? Do you know offhand? Jeff, Jeff, I think just mentioned it, but Jeff? The, the recorder, the Gazette, um, websites, town websites, and um, I believe Indeed. Oh, you, that, that's. I was wondering if you tried like Monster or Indeed or something like that. Okay. That's what I was really looking for, Jonathan. Okay, I, I'm kind of curious if we if we sent the description to both the um, uh, the trade association for for senior centers that's based in what is it East Hampton. Um, and also, I'm wondering if it was sent to uh, the Office of Elder Services at the state level. I do not know. Jeff, do you know? I, can, I, I don't know, but I can check on that. If, if, and again, this is just my opinion, and Trevor and, and Tom can, can uh, tell, me, tell me no, but I, I think that we're well served to send, the res, to send the job description to both of those entities. Um, Broadest net, yeah. I, I, Jonathan, I would say, again, from I would say uh, a posting at GCC, you know, contact them and also UMass. Um, and and I and again, I just, you know, the more sometimes. When we've done searches on the in the Gazette, in the uh, um, re recorder, sometimes we have not had a very good response. For whatever reason, well, so you know the, the the reality is it's limited and it gets limited more and more every day that we we our society moves away from people reading newspapers. So, I, I, and that's fine. It's not an indictment on 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 those papers, sure. but it's just the reality. Absolutely. Uh, so, but so Jeff, if if you could if you could make sure that they're sent to the 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 association. And David, the guy who runs the association, David, uh, I forget his name off the top of my head, he was a wonderful guy. Um, send it to the people at, whether there's a website at Elder Services, 
uh, UMass, GCC. For that matter, if you're going to send it to GCC, send it to HCC and stick and see what we get. And, 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 and have a, a quick turnaround if people are interested. And I actually like that. I often find that the people who are most interested are the people who are going to respond most quickly. Right. I, I agree. So, okay. Um, any other questions for, on, on that topic? No, I, 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 again, I just think it's important. You know, I, I think we should hold the apple. I think we should hold, we sh personally, I don't think we should close the, uh, close the, uh, uh, thing it should be rolling until we hire somebody. I agree. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. You know? Yeah. And, and and I think we should keep it open and, and and don't be and don't be afraid to see what comes in. You know, right up and 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 if, and if we get you know, I, I mean, it's a little more work for the committees and such. But to tell you the truth, I mean, we want the best person we can. I don't want to just put an arbitrary date on it. Yep. Agreed. Absolutely. Okay. Um, let's now jump to short-term building use concepts um, mm -hmm. before we go to the needs assessment. Uh, because I think this board has been pretty clear that we feel there's a fine line between short-term needs and, and long-term long -term needs and, and what is good in the short-term will absolutely not match the long-term. Right, do you wanna hear where we're at so far, what, what we've been working on? I, I'd love to hear the the ideas because and and I've got and, and I'll and I'll and I'll chime in as as okay. needed, but I'd love to hear what what's going on short term. So um, I'll get John to weigh on in on this a bit too, because and uh, Dave Wolfram has has been leading the charge a little bit. We got to get our, our seniors out of the tent, right? And w winter's coming, cold weather's coming. So we've had um, some groups look at the church that we have. Um, not the sanctuary, but the, the other end of the church. Um, so we're, we're getting uh, some estimates right now on what it would take to make that ADA uh, compliant, some split, uh, mini splits, electrical, uh, bring the kitchen up to speed, close off the sanctuary and get a place for our seniors to work, you know, through the winter. So I think I think that'll that'll happen uh, fairly quick. We're in the middle of doing that now. We have an article on on annual town meeting to do that, uh, to you know to raise a sum of funds to do that. And we already we've been reaching out to volunteers to to take a look at that work. Um, John, do you want to add to that where we're at on that? I know you've been meeting with with um, David more than me. So. Yeah, yeah, no. So uh, last Monday, a week ago, we met with Deerfield Academy. We facilitated a meeting over there with uh, the head of carpentry. They walked the area. They uh, were making notes and a list of what they would need. We're waiting to hear back from Deerfield Academy as to their timeline. Uh, Trevor did mention we have a special town meeting on for October 4th for possible funding. However, I did ask Deerfield Academy if they would be uh, participatory in a fund um, with funds for the church. Uh, we've looked at three to four mini splits, one for the kitchen, one for a side room. That'd be a, a great card room, reading room, whatever we, uh, we decide with the seniors, certainly well beyond my purview. And then there's one master main area. So the kitchen is quite large and I view it not only as this winter, but I really view it as they're probably going to end up spending two seasons in there because we all know to get through a needs assessment, a feasibility study, work through an architecture firm, funding through town meeting, identify grants. We're looking at a two to three year build, even if we refurbish a building for a senior center or if we start from scratch. So we need to find a home for the seniors for possibly two to three and a half years is what I'm looking at from my perspective. I met with my father and Bruce St. Peter's in there last Friday uh, from the electrical side of it. And they're supposed to be going in there and um, they met with the electrical inspector, the building inspector at the same time. And they're supposed to be going back in, I think, tomorrow or Wednesday and giving me an itemized list and uh, possible funds that they may need to upgrade. Overall, the building's in pretty good shape. It's a gorgeous old building. Uh, and I think it, it will suit the seniors well for two to two and a half years. But I could not agree more with Jonathan. It is not a permanent fix. It is merely temporary. And I think what we all are looking for to serve the seniors 
is way beyond two rooms and a large, large kitchen. We're looking for much more expansive programs and uh, capabilities. Hey, uh, Jonathan. Yeah. Um, John, so, so you're thinking about spending the money to upgrade the church then, right? Yes. And you wouldn't, cons then we are not going to consider remediation of the present building? I think that's absolutely needs to be considered in the future. However, it's cost prohibitive at this point. If you're going to remediate that, it's got to be taken ultimately to studs. And when it is, you're talking about one to $4 million by the time we put in. And we, I mean, if you're going to take it to studs, you're going to make the whole building useful. And when you do, you're going to put in an exterior, exterior elevator. You're going to bring it up to code. And yeah, I mean, that's a massive, massive project. And, and more expensive than, than well. Building. Right. Yeah, we're looking at thirty to fifty thousand. That's a one to four million. Joel, just to let you know, that's what I kind of one of my crews at. I mean, would you have a problem if I brought my uh, ESU ESU people over there to take a look at it and tell us if what what they think they could get? Because I mean, we do that every day at the university. I love it. I'd be all about it, and I'm more than happy to facilitate that anytime. All right, let let, let me talk. Let me. I, I mean. There, there's two people uh, there. Uh, there's an assistant director of uh, EHNS. I'd, I'd like to get Mike Grover because that's his life. And I also like to get my, and I, I know we can't do it on UMass time, but I would ask them to come either before work or after work to take a work, take a over look at it. Okay. And, uh, and, and if I can get them both lined up, I, I think that would, it would give you and I, Jonathan, Trevor, a more accurate, um, what we could do. How's that? I love it. <clears throat> okay. Yep. All about it. Because the, the other way you're, you're, you're still talking about spending a quarter of a million dollars. Uh, I, I'm looking at ultimately probably around 50,000 and I'm hoping that the possibility that DA is going to pay for half. Well, John, you're saying that's, that's, your estimate, that's your estimate for the church. Yes. Yep. We're looking at a handicap accessible ramp on the backside of the church. That's probably 70, 80 feet long. And then we're looking at a handicap accessible door and the uh, probably two new front doors that are insulated. And I, I have a list in my office, the work, it's going to take one to 200 carpentry hours, but if those hours are volunteer hours and we're only paying for the materials themselves, I'm hoping to keep this well under $50,000. Tom, I cut you off. I'm sorry. What, do you, what were you going to say? No, that's, that's okay. I, 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 you know, I, when we did our, when we moved over from the, um, now the Blue Heron over to the old Sunland Elementary School, we got a lot of stuff volunteered, a lot of contractors volunteered stuff. So I, if, if we get a plan together, um, I'm willing to put it out there. At, we have a, we have a guy, former selectman that, uh, from Deerfield that, uh, makes a lot of noise about keeping prices um, low. So <laughs> Maybe we get him and his people to help us as well. He's a good carpenter. I'm more than happy to torque him up. I, I, well, again, I, I see, you know, I mean, he, he's built some houses right up the street from me. And, and again, I mean, I, I would, I would hit up everybody that I know to assist. You yeah. know what I mean? I both mean, in yeah. Sunderland field and Whiteley too. I mean, mostly Whiteley, you know, I mean, they got a lot of contractors there as well. So yeah. And, and, and we also have, you know, from the electrical side, we, we obviously have contacts in Deerfield, and we also have a former select board member from Sunderland who might might be willing to, to help on the electrical side. Um, and I know some plumbers that might be able to help with that. I don't know, John, whether you think there's any plumbing needs. Um, my guess is if you're talking to handicap ADA, you're going to need... Uh, One some, brand new handicap accessible bathroom. Yeah, exactly. There's two other bathrooms that will be for staff and other people can use them. But we, according to the building commissioner, we need at least one handicap accessible bathroom in Deerfield Academy is aware of that. Yeah. And then what's the timing? What, what do you think the timing is? If, if all things worked perfectly and then if all things worked horribly, what's the timing? Uh, I think it depends. I have to wait to hear from Deerfield Academy later this week. I don't know how much free time their carpentry unit has and then how many volunteers we can get involved. Um, I think it's, it's a matter of how all the stars align. I would like to see this done November 15th, December 1st, which is a long time for the seniors to be outside in a cool tent. 
So, but I'm being realistic as well. Yeah. Our funds so, won't even come into place until October 4th, if we're lucky. Yeah. So John, Jonathan. Yeah. Um, would we, would, if, if, if we're looking at, let's say November 1st, November 15th, would we want to look for a temporary home, like over in the fellowship hall over in Sunderland? Would you, you think people in Deerfield would come Trevor? Yeah. I, I was yeah. also thinking the congregational church in, in Waitley could do it as well, just as a, as a possibility. Well, you got a, you got a, you got a, a kitchen over there. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I'm one of our one of our selectmen is select board members is a member of that uh, the 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 leadership group there so it'd be a little bit whatever you know what I mean okay and and, and his fellowship hall how you, how handicap friendly is it it's got it's uh, all handicap accessible it is yeah it has where, been where is that where is it uh, Tom I'm trying to right, center, right in the center of town right next to the congregational church. Trevor. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, great. Yes, yes. No, right. What do you mean? I mean, if, if we're talking, maybe you we're talking about a month, maybe, John. I think, I think month, it's great. Month and a half, maybe. I just want to get. I just want to get. I just want them to. I. I just want to have a place. Yeah, I agree. You agree. know, and if we all share, I think it's the best best way to go. Yeah, I I, I agree, and, and I was thinking as a stopgap, and I know it's not it's not a it's not a building, but as things get colder. Unfortunately, we haven't gotten there yet, um, and this is not a. We're we're more than happy to, um, and I think we want to we want to do this for for to spread the the the, the usage options. Um, we would put our tent up at our congregational church in the in the interim as well for things like exercise, etc. That that might it might get cold to do but we could put down every other flap and put our heater in there so that it wouldn't be toasty warm but it would be warmer than having completely open um open-ended tent in the interim if we, if we couldn't get into either fellowship hall or the basement of our congregational church in a expeditious fashion it's just an, i just want to make sure that we have a list of all options on an iterative basis so we know what might work for different weeks in the calendar. So, because I know that the, the, the tent, the, the, the non-flapped tent in Deerfield will lose its um, functionality before a, a, even a semi-flapped tent uh, will lose its functionality, even though, you know, again, it, it's, a, it's an iterative step. But it would be great to get people in a building sooner rather than later. I know they're 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 desperate for it. The only other question that I have is obviously the kitchen equipment in the senior center itself. Um, I don't know how easy it is to move that from one spot to the next as we evolve. Um, whether whether we could take that equipment out and put it into either Fellowship Hall in Sunderland or the Congregational Church in Waitley as a stopgap measure before it is um, on a permanent temporary basis put into the 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 uh made over congregational church next to this current senior center uh, i know i know that there's a uh, there's a fridge we're trying to figure out if it still works in there we're going to pull the the gas stove and and probably get a um electric stove um for that if if I'm right about this, John, let me know. But I think that was the plan is to kind of test that fridge. It's a good size fridge and somebody thought it worked. I thought it didn't, but I, I could be wrong about that. Or it was too big to move over to ours. I can't, I don't know if maybe one of you guys remember the conversation, but there was a discussion about a, borrowing the fridge out of that church at one point, but I think it was just too big to move. Trevor, I'm lost. What's wrong with the equipment in the senior center? The one, uh, so in our new senior center, I don't think it'll fit. Um, it, it, where we're going to put our stove. Because I, I don't know, is that an electric stove in the current senior center? Or is it gas? Because we're getting rid of gas in, in the new, in the temporary senior center. It's gas, uh, gas, I believe. Because it yeah. doesn't have gas or you just don't want to use it? We don't, we don't want to use it. It requires a whole lot different apparatus for a fan and all that stuff. I think we're just going to move to electric. Plus, the gas has been shut off. I don't know if we can even get it turned back on. 
Right. It, I mean, because it's a relatively new stove. That's that's my that's the unfortunate. Oh, the one in our in our current senior center is. Yeah. 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 Well, we'll have to just hang on to it then. I don't know. Um, I didn't realize that. Hey, yeah. Trevor, it's, new, it's a new stove that's been fixed a couple times. Yeah, but it got replaced <laughs> not too long ago, and again, it gets heavy usage, obviously. Yeah. Um, but okay. Yep. All right, so John Pachorik, you'll give us an update in the next week. Sure, more than happy to. I just sent you the uh, the master email I sent out to our select board. So you, Jeff, and Tom have it now. You can kind of see what needs to be done in the building. You can peek through it. Okay. Hey, Tom, do you want to who, who's uh, who's in charge of fellowship hall at your congregational church? Uh, I'll talk to uh, Crystal Drake tonight. Okay, because I'm guessing that that is a little bit more handicap accessible than ours is. It could be. I, I, I know it's, uh, it, it's, I, I believe it's fully handicap accessible, Jonathan. Yeah. Okay. You know, is, I, I would call ours quasi. Yeah, no, I think this one is, but, uh, Jeff and I will talk to Crystal tonight. Okay. Okay. Any, anything else that anybody wants to add on, on the temporary home issue? All right. Let's go to the, um, needs assessment. John, you want to bring us up to speed on where we are? Sure. So uh, Jan Mutchler got a promotion with uh, UMass Boston. So great for her. Uh, Caitlin uh, is new and she has taken on the role for this position. So I've reached out to Caitlin. She was supposed to get me a, pres a uh, proposal either today or tomorrow to do a needs assessment for the South County Senior Center with the three towns. Uh, I did advise her that we have roughly $25,000 to spend at this point. I know that their full assessment, if you guys went back to my original document, was about 30, 35,000 roughly. Um, so I did ask her ultimately what she could do for that amount of money. Uh, the town of Deerfield allocated $15,000 at annual town meeting. And then uh, we did get a commitment from the FERCOG for $10,000 through from the DLTA grant. So um, that's kind of where we stand. As soon as I see that proposal from UMass Boston, I will send it out to the group as a whole and we can start uh, digging into it and figure out if it's everything we're looking for or if there's things we want modified and added to it, then we may have to find some, uh, a tad bit of additional funding to increase that a little bit. That's kind of where we stand right now. I'd like to, like to get something signed off on in the next 30 days and get this moving. That's my thoughts. Yeah, and we're still in, we're still in line with, with looking for the activities of, of interest by seniors and, 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 and pending seniors. And yeah, we're looking at 50 plus populace. Yeah. And we we want to know obviously the most greatest programs out there today, what people would use, utilize, and uh, then we'll f hit the flip side of it, the feasibility study. What can we afford? Right. Um, you know, I know that it's not going to be in our budget this time around, but there's always the, the, the rub between what, we use today and what's anticipated to be the thing in, in 10 years that we don't know about yet. You know, it's sort of like planning to buy uh, an Apple watch before the Apple watch existed. But, you know, so I, I don't know whether UMass Boston would do any or would share any of its findings with vision on that other people have done sort of stealing from other needs assessments um, from, from larger budgets from other towns. So that they, the towns that may have said, yeah, we know that in 15 years, because of the large senior population, the larger senior population there, and, and because they are near the end of the boomer generation and they're more technologically savvy or whatever it is, I don't know, but it'd be great to steal from, from others if, if at all possible. Yeah. Do, does either Sundern or Wheatley have a fall town meeting plan? Is there any way you guys could fund some of the needs assessment we've got, I think 17,000 from Deerfield. And I think John talked to Bob Dean and we got about 10 from DTLA funds. Yeah. So I just didn't know if you guys had any, I know you um, had asked for DTLA, but uh, you know, they, they didn't give us anything for, for, um, you know, each town like we were hoping for. No, we, we have an impression that uh, Trevor, that there was going to, the funding was going to come through the COG. Yeah, and they didn't. So uh, we just didn't know if you guys had any ability to do no. that. Okay. We, we we hadn't put we hadn't put any money away for that truck. I know. Yep. Um, I'm still here with my hand out though. 
Tom. Yeah, no, I know because we, <laughs> you know, we were assuming that 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 we would get the DLC. I know. I don't, yeah, I don't know why they they bailed on that, but they did find they did find ten for us, so that's helpful. Uh, put some money for it. I just I just didn't want to run out or shortchange it because we don't have the funding. I, I'd love to to see what you guys used as your. Trevor, send me the um, warrant article that you used. For for which? For your oh for our oh for our uh yeah sure we can do that. Yeah, yeah we actually put it on for capital request. Yeah. yeah 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 capital request sure. Yeah. Yep. Um and 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 detail and specificity is, is the okay. word today. Um. So on the flip side of that, Jonathan, will be the feasibility study. I've already reached out to Marco from uh, Dietz Incorporated, as we had spoken to in the past. I've asked them for an updated proposal. So as we get moving with the needs assessment, my goal is to try and towards February or March, work us right into a feasibility study before annual town meeting. So we kind of know where we're at. Um, you And the feasibility study would be to marry up the needs with 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 what it would take yeah, yeah it's ultimately it, it's cost balance we look at okay we want to look at these seven different sites or three different sites and if we take down this building it's going to cost this if we renovate this building yep yeah. yep yeah. what would it do to the projected impact tax rates etc right okay that yeah that'll, that'll be really helpful yeah uh, and i'd like to get that moving so we have a report in hand towards march or april as every one of us cycles into a town meeting um, I'm, I know, I know this isn't, um, reality based at all, John, but I'm worried that March or April would be too late. Agreed. That's why I'm trying to like cycle this as fast as I can. I'd like to have the needs assessment signed off on right now and start moving. Y yeah. Yeah. Because, and even if, and, and even if the needs assessment cut a few corners, not for cost purposes, but just because you know, we could anticipate some things. It, it, it's the stuff that maybe we can't anticipate for it from a needs assessment perspective, and that will lower our cost and it'll just force us to be a little creative. Uh, but if we wait until March or April, it, it just, it's just not going to happen. I don't think. I think maybe towards December, we cycle the entire group into a meeting with Caitlin and figure out where we're at, what we're looking at for size and scope of a project. And we, uh, I mean, we're going to have to put it out to the central register to engage an architecture firm to do a feasibility study. Uh, right. you, would, you would hope that DEETS or other specialized groups would bid on it, but we'll see. Um, and then, you know, we may be able to engage somebody towards January, early February, and literally put them right on the hot seat and hopefully cycle numbers down to us by early, mid-March, pushing it. And I, I'm not sure that helps us for annual town meeting, but I think that's pushing the cycle. Yeah. You tell me. Well, no, I, I, I think you're, I think you're spot on. I don't think that it will be quick enough. I mean, I, I can, I can picture finance committees with a B in their bonnet pushing back hard. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I think what we do is, is towards town meeting, we look for money for architecture firms to come in with a full design. Once we've identified where we want to focus on, and then we come back to a fall special town meeting if necessary for full funding. Is there appetite? And again, I'm not saying I support this or don't support it. So I want to, is there an appetite um, in Deerfield to, to level that current building? There's people on both sides of it. There are people that are absolutely emotionally attached to it that would have chest pain over that. And then there are people that are like, hey, whatever's most cost effective, we get it. It's a 90 year old building. It is what it is. That has not been that has not been well maintained. It's turned into a money pit as opposed to a 90 year old building that was that was stroked. Yeah, but there's other people out there that um, the thought is from a couple of residents out there. Why don't we renovate that? Put the town offices over there. Take the town offices that's relatively dead flat and put a brand new senior center over there right next to the police station. I don't know if that would work. That may be part of the feasibility study we look at. And now the seniors are on a flat single floor. And it's a pretty big space. Yes. Yeah, I get it. I get, so I get that. Feasibility study wise, we literally, we need to write down all these ideas or even if there's a location in Sunderland or Waitley, we literally want them to look at six or seven different sites and say, you tell us. Yep, we have, we have a site. 
Yeah. We'd have a site. What's that, Tom? We have a site. I mean, I, Jeff and I are Jeff and I are working on it oh, now. Tell us about it. Huh? Tell us about it. What do you got? Uh, I'd rather go in executive session before okay. talking about Understood. that. Makes sense. Yep. Um, and, so and you're looking at it. it. Okay. I, let's let's schedule that soon. Please. Um, part of the, you know what, John, and that strikes me. Part of the needs assessment. I would be curious if we added a question to the needs assessment, and it's for current participants, obviously, more than people who aren't there. I've always said, well, it's great to have the senior center within walking distance of a convenience store, of, you know, potentially a post office, of, of, a, of a restaurant, of a, of a bank. How many seniors we check, actually... We check all those. Uh, we, we check in our location. We check all those. Well, right, but my that's but my question is, I'm wondering how many seniors actually do that, or do they drive in and drive out, and they never wander around? And if they never wander around, then it's a moot point. Yeah, I think currently they wander in and they drive off. I think as we expand out, um, to Tom's point, I think you would want that because our current senior center houses twenty or thirty people. They're the ritual people. They're great. They're amazing. Our goal is to engage the one to 3,000. Right, right, right. And, and, would, and would they want to say, hey, I'm here, I'm going to go to the bank. I'm here, I'm going to go to the post office. I'm here, I want to do a little shopping. I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud, you guys. So, okay. Yeah. I think we raised all that with Caitlin. Yeah. Okay. And, if well, you know and Jonathan, I would, say, I would say it's that all those are things that you could do, but the, the more important thing, it's got to be on the, on it. It's got, I think to make it successful, it has to be on public transportation route. Absolutely. And, and, and that, that, and that, and that excludes certain things or certain locations. And, 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 and we got to fight the, we're fighting the fight with the PVTA, PVTA and the FRTA right now. Well, wow. and, and again, either that or, Either that, or we we talk to one or the other to to run a uh, transportation system for us. Right. Well, the 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 only I think Tom and I'm 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 cynical now. The only way to solve for that is to merge the FRTA and PBTA. But if if we can't if if we can't move beyond the parochialism of having two two transportation services within a uh, a, a, a a forty mile radius, then then we're lost. Um, but that merger is not going to happen. So we got to figure out who's going to, unfortunately the merger is not going to happen. So we got to figure out how to be more creative with, with to your point. Absolutely. But you know, I, I just, and it, you know, I, I think it's un, unfortunate that when you bring it up, people say, well, it's not our problem because and, and state the reason, but it, when there's an, where, where there's a, if, if you are really looking out for, the residents of the area and not a specific geographic area, you know, then you, you have to, then you should be willing to offer solutions to help move that plan forward. And we just don't have administrators in, in those, and, and we don't have administrators in those two positions that are willing to think outside of the box right now. They, they're, they're, they're tied up into a little box and, and they don't, and, you know, Sunland, Deerfield, Whiteley, Conway, whatever, Leverick, are just little small, little small things that they just really not, aren't very interested in looking at. Right. And, and would it be the two to create a strategic partnership? There are a number of ways to do, to do that. But from what I gather, you just said, you're thinking that a strategic partnership would need to be discussed top down rather than bottom up. Absolutely. In organizations. Yeah. So you would need their top administrators involved from the, from the ground floor. They they have to and and and, and again there, there's there's a Sunland has the only really a, what they quote unquote affordable housing I mean, we have our ten percent we're the only, you know one of the yeah. only places in Franklin County right and mm -hmm. and where where is your where is your where is your uh, a, a major thing is a GCC so we have we have people students that go to GCC that that can, cannot get a bus ride to GCC that yeah. that have no public transportation without taking a bus to Deerfield, then waiting and they have to transfer three or four times. Right. Try to get from Irving, try to get from Irving to Sunderland. Oh, when it's right down Route 63. 
Think about it, Trevor. Yeah. Think about it. I, I mean, we that's a problem that that exists in any now, you now try to get from Springfield to Northampton, which is the crow flies, is about 15 miles tops, 10 miles tops, and it's an hour and a half bus ride. Right. Yeah. Hour and a half. That's not economic, that's not an economical stimulus plan. Right. Um, okay, so we, we just have to be we just have to be more creative how we do things. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. If if we set up Tom, if we set up and this isn't short term, this is definitely long term. And I like this. If we were to set up a meeting, and I'm happy to, to try, or I, whoever whoever has the best relationships with the directors of PVTA and FRTA and this board of oversight to talk about a strategic partnership three years out to use John Pachorik's timeline, would they accept the invitation to have a meeting? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think we should do that, you guys, in, at a very soon to come meeting so that we know what's plausible right. as this needs assessment and then feasibility study is generated. Because you're right, if, if this isn't on public transportation, then we're spinning our wheels. Yeah. yeah. John, John, John Pachurik, Chief Pachurik, talk about a thousand people using the facility. It, it can come true, okay? 25 percent of the population is going to be sixteen over, or, or it's already sixteen over. Right. Yeah. So so and 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 again, it, it's it's it the I would hope the needs assessment would come back and say, you know, we we don't need a senior center of what they did forty years ago, and mm -hmm. and and it and it may be different, it may look different, but yeah. there there is a need, and I think if you get if you had transportation. You would definitely get people there, especially for meals. We've always heard that. Yep. Yeah. All right. Let's let's try to let's try to um, Tom. Are you the right guy to to um, see if we can generate a meeting with those two individuals? Sure. And should we create the, the date options or should we leave it open to them and then we can fit in? I, I'm a believer that we, we create the date options. Yeah. Flexible. But we should, give an, we should give a variety of options rather than leaving it open ended because we would need to show. show when, you, when you show, oh, yeah, whenever you guys want to, it's an out mm -hmm. to not do it at all. Right. Okay. So why don't I, I'll send around an email to, to, to this group. Um, saying and i'll actually actually what i'll do is i'll create a doodle poll great and nope. and and we'll and and we'll see if we can come up with with five options that we can that we can agree to and then we can distribute it to them saying hey we'd like to uh host you at a, at a meeting and i think it should be an in-person meeting and i say that because i'm against in-person meetings again religiously because of covid so i don't know how to do that because i'm not sure that zoom is gonna bake the cake right um, and I know Waitley has eliminated public meetings again. Okay. So I'll so let's send around the doodle poll first, then we can figure out logistics later. I'll start that. John, I texted you Bob Decker's uh, email just because he's our uh, he's our rep to the FRTA. So group him in. Okay. Yeah, we should probably group in. I don't know if anybody else. England and Waitley reps to the FRTA as well. Yeah. Yep. I don't know who they are, but I know that. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I can. I, I, do you know off the top of your head, Jeff? No. I think we just haven't. Oh, well, it. I may know who it is. It may have changed, but I don't think so. So. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So, does anybody have anything that you're afraid I'm going to miss? before we end this conversation that we need to make sure that we follow up on? I think the big thing is in the next week or two, we need to schedule another meeting with the entire board of oversight to, uh, mm -hmm. to review any proposal from UMass Boston. And then we yep. need to, uh, to expedite that process moving forward. Okay. Um, I want to make sure you guys are all comfortable with anything that we're. Uh, no, working. I think we need to do that. That John, thank you. Um, I, I'm going to suggest we won't have anything by by Tuesday the twenty first, will we, John? Or is that cutting a little close? She told me she'd have me a proposal Monday or Tuesday, being today or tomorrow. Oh, 
Well, let's schedule for the, can people do the 21st? So far, yeah. Tom, Tom, four again? That's fine with me. At four? Um, and then we'll cancel it if, if John Pachorek gives us bad news. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, last thing, we don't have – does anyone know what's going – and I sadly do not. Does anyone have uh, – uh, Sue's not here – a quick update on – what is being done at the tent other than lunches right now and how many people we're servicing? Uh, let's see. Is Fran's on. Has she been attending? I didn't know if she, I mean, I see people there when I drive by, but I'm, I'm usually out in the Berkshires all day. So yeah. Hey Fran. Hi, they're doing um, bingo Monday mornings and card playing knitting yep. Tuesday mornings. Um, they're doing Tai Chi, and I'm not sure whether that's under the tent. I think it was too cool one day, so they did it out on the front lawn. Yeah. Um, trying to think what else. Well, bingo uh, cards, they're going to have a cribbage tournament coming up, too. So yeah. cool. um, trying to get some things going under there anyway. Right. Yeah. And, and, and Fran, about how many people, and it probably changes depending upon the activity, do you have a sense of how many people are participating? Well, not too many right about now. I think I only saw maybe 10 doing bingo this morning and maybe five or six doing the uh, knitting when I was there last week. So, yeah. yeah. And it's, I don't know if it's partly because it's too uncomfortable or whether they're just. Yeah. People are still hesitant about going out. I'm not sure which. Yep. And 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 are are, are meals being served to those people? No, it's still a pickup meal, so that um, it's one that you just take home with you. So meals aren't actually served under the tent. Right. So they're still takeout. Yep. Um, how do we find out? Would Sue have those numbers, you guys? Who who would be the best person to have the numbers so we know how many people are picking up meals these days? Sue, um, Sue? Oh, I don't know. I'd leave that up to Fran. She would know best. Um, either Sue or the um, Life Path employee who was Christina. Can't think or Christine. I can't think of her last name right now. But it's on the um, Senior Center newsletter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You can find the information there. Okay. Okay, well, that just shows you the urgency of getting this to happen because the tent is not helping our, and it's not the fault of the tent, it's just the reality of a tent. Um, yeah, not comfortable chairs. It, yeah. it, it, it's not helping our um, attendance figures at all. Yep. Does anybody else want to, does anybody want to talk about anything that's not on the agenda before we adjourn? Tom? All set. Okay. Trevor? Yes. Sorry, it's Jen Remillard. Um, I just had a question. I was listening to your comments about the needs assessment, and I guess my understanding from some of the other meetings was that there was a proposal, um, and I don't know if that was the FERCOG money that you were thinking about with the $30,000, um, or was that $30,000 the assessment for the building um, that, Chief, that John talked about? Well, there's been, a, there's been a couple things. We had set money aside I want to say four years ago, three or four years ago. Um, and I think that was $30,000 we set aside at that point to see what we were going to do with the church at that at that time. And I think uh, we also set some money aside this past year for a true like a true needs assessment study. And then we were really banking on the uh, FERCOG to use our DTLA funds to do a lot of that as well. And that didn't come through, although they did come through with, I think, 10000 um for, for this project so there's a few different buckets of money i don't know if that you, answers your question but what is the baseline on um, for the cost analysis for the assessment what do you, what do you mean by that like how much do we think so what what is the term yeah what's the cost that you came up with well, for I think, each community I think john reached out to umass boston and one other firm and they were just kind of giving ballparks of what it was we don't have an actual you know we didn't go out to bid to say, hey, you need to tell us how much this is going to cost for a needs assessment. A lot of times when we kind of come up with some numbers to annual town meeting, we kind of guess based on past practices how much things cost. And we say, well, 
we need 30,000. Can we swing 30,000 to put aside? And then we go get a bid and it winds up 25,000 or something like that. And, right. and Jen, you want to add to that? And, and Jen, the, the, um, the other piece was that there's a, there's X number of dollars that the cog sets aside for its DLTA funds. Mm -hmm. And that's the next amount. Um, each town put this needs assessment as their number one priority. The way that cog works it is that they ask each town for a list of three priorities in order of priority. Right. Um, LTA uses and the three towns agreed that we would each request it as number one, assuming that that would rule the day because we each want it. Um, but that did not happen. And, and we went back and hat in hand and said, come on, you guys got to help us. And they graciously did. Um, but that's also where we knew what our cap sort of would be if we were going to strictly use the DLTA funds. And I don't remember what that total could have potentially been. I don't know whether Tom or Trevor did or, or you, John. 25, I want to say, but I could be wrong. Uh, the UMass Boston was 30 to 35,000 to complete the needs assessment. And I was just looking at Dietz and Associates that also provided us one. And I that don't remember, high. but I, I remember they were like $20,000 higher. Yeah. Yeah. But, but do you remember if we had gotten the DLTA funding that we originally applied for, how much that would have been? Oh, it was 20 or 25,000. Yeah. I thought so. I thought it was like 25. Yeah. So that, Jen, I hope that helps you. I don't know. No, it does. I just, I guess I'm concerned because I mean, like, um, you know, it's been, been in talks for a couple of years that, you know, that I've been participating in different town things and just to see and hearing, um, you know, the concerns that it's been brought up and with COVID and everything, I know that puts a hold on a, quite a few things. Um, but, you know, it's just, uh, I guess from some neighbors and such, I guess it thought, I thought it would be really underway um, at this point. So, um, but, you know, I, I did listen to the select board meeting and heard um, select board men Wolfram from talk about, you know, getting the seniors into the, at least the church at this point here. So it's good to see that that's going to be done. Um, but you know, hopefully uh, between the three communities in FERCOG, you'll be able to come up with, with more of the funds um, because it just seems like there's so much, you know, so much that needs to be done with, with this part. So, but um, <laughs> yeah, I know. And it's, <laughs> it's really frustrating and there's yes, no way, I mean, like, and I understand the nuances that certain funds that are set aside can only be used for certain things within the community. And there's, you know, a bunch of bureaucratic red tape that needs to be gone through. Um, is there also a way when you were talking about the transportation issue, while I understand that, you know, each of you um, have your own connections with the FRTA and the PBTA, have you reached out to um, to your state senator with uh, Comerford or Natalie yeah. Bly? Yes, because I know that um, at least with Joe, that was a huge issue that they had with transportation, trying to get back and oh. forth. Um, I know mostly oh. with the train, but um, I also know that, you know, that that's been a, an issue on their radar. It, it's and, and, and besides that, we were working. We are working with the uh, and she just she just left the position, yeah, president of GCC also. Uh, and, and the president of GCC was talking was kind of acting as the mediate, you know, kind of like the median person to with all of those people. So, um, because it, it's important for GCC also because they, they, you know, they want to keep their enrollment numbers up and Sunderland has affordable housing. And yet we can't, we can't, uh, if you live in Sunderland, it's much more difficult to get to Greenfield to, to attend GCC. And, and if you get there, you, the classes, the classes aren't sit around a bus schedule. So, right. So there's things that can be done, but somebody's going to want to do it. Right now, we can't get anybody to want to do anything. So, and 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 for like someone like PVTA, PVTA is like a quarter mile. They just have to go a quarter mile to drop them off in front of the uh, senior center. Seniors off at the senior center, and they wouldn't do that. Wow, that's really discouraging to hear. <laughs> um, I, I grew up in the greater Springfield area when I was in college, I went to do a lot of that stuff before, you know, with, with the PVTA and they used to be pretty flexible on things. Is it due to their funding decreased and profitability? And um, is there no, 
I understand senior fares are usually discounted, but is there any incentive for either of those organizations to al allow for, for even that quarter mile or anything to work? You would think so. Well, we're going to find out. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to go back at it, Jennifer. So yeah. we'll, we'll go back at it. We're going to hammer them. That could, that, that's what we want to try to accomplish. It, 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 and again, it shouldn't, it should not be difficult. It should be an easy, or, or do we have to look at, um, running running something ourselves also mm -hmm. we you know we, we may we may it, we may find out it's, it's easier better cheaper quicker just to do something ourselves so. yeah because you know i know that um right now deerfield's currently working on the senior housing issue and i think um encompassing the transportation wherever that goes as well would affect it not just the senior center um so maybe during that uh discussion you know main, making those main routes accessible because you know live i'm lucky i can afford a car but um but even when i moved to deerfield 2014 sorry i've got the train going by um there isn't a lot of transportation options for people um who don't have that uh economic you know who don't have the economic uh, benefit of, of affording a car um and even the bus schedules are really confusing and there's no accessibility um, for job schedules. So I think, you know, if you get a lot of groups behind your cause, not just seniors, but, you know, like GCC, um, low income housing, or, you know, or the housing in general, and, and maybe even some job uh, places, because there's staffing services in Springfield that actually shuttle up employees to Yankee Candle for production and other things I've seen their, um, their van on the highway at different points. So they actually go above and beyond for their employees by driving them to the location. Right. Um, and that's, that's, a budget, that's a budget item for them, obviously. Yeah. 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 Fran, you had a question, your hand was up. Yes, about the uh, transportation, what, what is going to become of the van that we acquired from the Hatfield Senior Center? Could that be worked into it somehow? We hope. Yeah, we, we hope we hope down the road. I mean, with the with with the with the influx of COVID, I hesitate to put seven seniors in a van together. Um, that's my that's my personal opinion, and I and I know I tend to be very very cautious with that. Um, but with the Delta variant uh, right now, that's. I, I would have a hard time supporting that just because you are, you are packed in there. Um, but down the road, when, when, when we come back, come back to normal again, um, I think Fran, that that's, that's definitely, and, but I think we're going to need more than that van. We're going to need other vans. We're going to need a, 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 a fleet of vehicles to, to solve this. If FRT and PBTA can't come up with a strategic partnership that, that we envision. Well, that's what I was thinking further along the line about yeah. getting um, seniors from their houses to the senior center if they need a ride. Yeah. Using mm -hmm. that, that capacity where there would only be perhaps one or two seniors at a time on it. Yeah, we got to do something. It's, it's a growing population. Um, it's, it's a shame. Um, okay. Right, right Jonathan? What's I mean... That? We're, we're going to get, we're going to, I, I think Trevor, myself, you, we, we need to talk. And if, and if, you know, if we get a meeting, I'll, I'll, I'll notify, uh, you know, I'll, I can talk to the new, new president of GCC and we get Natalie or uh, Joe to come also. Mm -hmm. And, and we can put a full court press. I, I, I've always felt, I mean, FT, FRTA and PVTA works on federal and state and local grants. Right. And and I I I've never been able to figure out why this is such a hard problem for them. Yep, it's power, well, I believe. But. You know me, I feel like they're very parochial. Um, but I wonder, you guys, and 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 because it's a longer term thing, I don't I don't worry about the urgency. People might say it's a long way off, but maybe the three of us, if we can, should block off the Thursday before the Select Board Association meeting in January. To do a series of meetings, not on cap, not on, not in the state house, but at the Department of Transportation, um, and other people who can, and not to exclude the state house, but, mm -hmm. but I, I think we need to raise the, the the awareness, and it's just three select board members from small towns in Western Massachusetts, but I, I think we have to try to do something to 
to ruffle some fe- not to ruffle from some feathers, but to 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 make people aware that we've got a real problem out here. That's true. So uh, I would I would be willing to do that if you guys wanted to to, to get out there early on on that Thursday morning because it actually yep. isn't that far away. No, I'm happy to do it. Okay, um, we've got we've got a five o'clock um, yeah. stop. So um, we I will send that doodle poll out tonight sometime, and okay. uh, for for hopefully next. Well, we're we're going to do next Tuesday at four. I'll yeah. get that out, uh, and then I'll send out a doodle poll for um, for what? Oh, for the for the for, for the meeting with FRT and PBTA. Yes. Thanks, you guys. Meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned. Second.